Hello and welcome to Work in Progress Japan. I'm Alex, and today I'll be taking you on a deep dive into Japanese culture and society. For today's episode, we're in a Buddhist temple in Tokyo. We'll be talking to Buddhist monk, LGBTQ activist, and makeup artist, Kodo Nishimura. 31-year-old Kodo Nishimura is a professional makeup artist, LGBTQ activist, and has been a practicing Buddhist monk since 2015. He currently lives and works at his family's temple in Tokyo. So what does your typical day look like here? Uh, we are a small temple. Mm -hmm. My father is also an active, working hard monk. Mm -hmm. I try to learn the ceremony. Um, I also do a lot of uh, talks. I am a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. I teach makeup um, to Miss Universe Japan competition uh, delegates. Every day it's really different. So how did you become a makeup artist? When I was living in Boston, I had an interest in doing makeup, but I was afraid because when I was in Japan, um, the clerk lady at the department store would ask me, is it for your mother or is it for your girlfriend? Yeah. And I could never say that it was for me. Yeah. Um, when I went to the US, I saw men wearing makeup, being fierce and confident. So that's when I started to feel that ah, like sexuality or gender doesn't define that you can do makeup or not. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to become a Buddhist monk? So I grew up in this temple, mm -hmm. but I never wanted to become a Buddhist monk. Uh -huh. But um, after studying in the US for about, I think, eight years, I discovered that I need to face what I always had avoided. When I was in the training, I asked a really well-respected master mm -hmm. if I can be a Buddhist monk being a homosexual person. He said, homosexuality is not a problem in Buddhism. We can all be saved equally as long as we are faithful. And about what you wear, people are not used to seeing monks wearing makeup and heels. Mm -hmm. But he said that Japanese Buddhism has been evolving. At, at some point of the history, monks could not um, survive just of, of being a monk. The most important message of Buddhism is that um, everybody can be equally saved. So if it helps you to deliver that message to more people, I don't think you wearing something shiny or you getting dressed up as a problem. So it's noon, we just finished our interview. Before we go off to lunch, Kodo is going to perform a recital of the Buddhist sutras. Buddhism is one of Japan's two major religions, alongside Shintoism. About two-thirds of the Japanese population identifies Buddhist, although the number of practicing adherents is likely closer to the 20 or 30 percent range. Japanese Buddhism is divided into 13 schools, spread across 75,000 temples, and counting a total of roughly 350,000 monks. Kodo Nishimura is part of the Jodo Shu school, which has been part of the Japanese religious landscape since the 12th century. So, it's one in the afternoon, we just finished having lunch. Kodo is going to start his act afternoon activities as a makeup artist. Let's go check on what he's doing. Because I feel like... Oh my god, oh, that's so cool. So, how do you choose which traits you want to accentuate and which ones you want to play down? If I put red lipstick, I feel like I look very like a biological woman who are living as biological women. That's not how I feel comfortable. I like to wear a lot of um, eye makeup, but not wear red lipstick or have my hair long or wear skirts. I'm not a woman woman, so I feel comfortable when I'm wearing pants, uh, heels with ankle 
um, cover ankle here, uh -huh. top of the foot. I don't yeah, know. and have my hair short is a good way for me to balance. So it's 2 p.m. now. What's next on your schedule? Now I'm going to answer um, Q and A session by ICU, which is a university in Japan. Part of Kodo's work is speaking with groups of people interested in learning more about his life, or generally about LGBTQ issues. Today, he's meeting with a group of students from Tokyo's International Christian University to talk about beauty standards and life as a young LGBTQ person in Japan. と、the garden here is really beautiful. Maybe I should have just become a monk myself. Anyway, Kodo's busy at a Q&A with the students. Let's go take a look around the temple. One of the things I really like about this monastery, and about Japan in general, is how much attention they put into the details. Like this window up here, whose sole purpose is to give a perfect view of the autumn foliage. So how did it go? It was good. Many of the concerns were coming from first-hand experiences. Mm -hmm. So some of them really shared their emotions and teared up. Mm -hmm. And being able to talk to like actual LGBTQ members and friends mm -hmm. is more meaningful than um, talking to the mass audience. So I really um, appreciate the questions and yeah, it was really nice. Awesome. So what are you going to do next? Now I'm going to change into the monk robe because they're going to do a shoot mm -hmm. when I'm in the monk robe. Excellent. Kodo removed his makeup and adorned green and gold robes. Whether in casual wear or formal monk's clothes, Kodo's looking good. The Q&A session just wrapped up. Let's go talk to some of the participants. その何か批判とか、その自分が傷つくようなもう自分は結構その、ま、シスジェンダー、ヘテロセクシャルな人に対して結構なんかアースバーサスゼンマインドみたいな感じになりがちだったんですね。その、あの人たちが分かってくれないみたいな。でもそういう時に、なんていうか
<laughs> I see you've changed again. Yes, I did. It looks amazing. What are you wearing? Uh, this is Ralph Lauren Pride Collection where they are celebrating that diversity. I put the rainbow pearl necklace and this is, uh, I think, Yoji Yamamoto. Uh, pants that I got like 10 years ago. <laughs> I'm I was really amazed how you're able to remember everybody's names and you noticed that their feet were maybe cold, you brought them slippers, you noticed that not everybody had an umbrella, you brought them umbrellas. Uh, I, it seems like this is something that you're very good at. Has it always been part of your personality or is it something that you've had to develop over time? I think it's part of me, but at the same time I was always pro trying to protect my sexuality and my existence so I became even more aware of how people are feeling or behaving. I see. Yeah. So you took this kind of insecurity when you turned it into a strength and use it now to help the people who come and Thank see you. Thank you for noticing. Spoken like a true Buddhist monk. Next, Kodo will be heading back to his room for his evening activities. Let's follow him. This is what I got in Mexico. It's like a uh, mystical, magical creature. I really like cute stuff, so you'll see a lot of that in my room as well. Because I was quarantined, I mean, everybody had to be uh, confined, so I bought different things when I was in my house. I ordered uh, different plants um, and decorated my Kodo's working on many projects at the moment, including one inspired by Disney. Kodo is collaborating with another Tokyo-based monk to design an LGBTQ-friendly sticker that various religious organizations can put up to show allyship. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, I know I'm okay. okay. I'm glad I could contribute at least something. <laughs> yeah! It's obviously the rainbow flag, but I tried to make um, different skin tones in gradation, um, doing a praying form. So I'm going to uh, propose this to the religious organization in Japan and show that the organization or individual um, building is um, for LGBTQ and inclusive guests. It's 6 p.m. Kodo just finished drawing. His next meeting is not until 6.30, so we have a 30-minute break and we're gonna go downstairs and relax a bit. It's 6.30, Kodo's lesson is about to start. Let's go check on him. Since Kodo has a lot of public speaking engagements, he takes weekly evening online lessons to improve his public speaking. Kodo's evening doesn't end with his speech lessons. I always thought monks went to bed early, but Kodo often stays up well into the night to answer emails, do administrative work, and learn other new skills. So, how was your day? Uh, it's been great. I was a little busy, yeah. um, but every day I have different things. But today, I'm happy to be interviewed by you, and I'm so happy that I was able to help um, the ICU University uh, students. What does Buddhism mean for you? Buddhism for me is like a book, a source where I can take information and wisdom from, mm -hmm. and a place where I can check if I'm going in the right direction. That's quite different from the way a lot of other people um, practice religion, where 
they have a very specific set of rituals and they'll always wake up at the same time and always practice the same way. Do you think this is the future of Buddhism, the way you practice it? I think that will make people happier because that means people are not bound to what they are expected to do, mm. but they can be creative and they can utilize what's been already done to further push what they have been doing. I think that will be the future. I don't know. But some people are more comfortable following what's been already decided. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a future for everybody, but I think it's nice to have an option. You recently published a book. Can you tell me a bit about your book? In Japanese, it's Seisei Dodo. Uh, it means like you are not afraid to face anything. That's what I aspire to be because I was so afraid to show myself um, for many years. The book talks about my uh, biography and also how to find confidence when you feel that you are different from other people who are around you. Are you happy with your life right now? Uh, I choose to be happy. I can choose to see what I have, um, the friends I have, health that I have, family and um, opportunities that I'm given. So I, I, tr I try to be happy. I choose to see the bright side. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for taking sure. the time today. Of course. What really struck me today is that while Buddhism is still perceived in Japanese society and indeed throughout the world as being all about austerity, tradition, and rituals, Kodo's trying really hard to overturn that perception. Rather than letting religion dictate his purpose in life, he's chosen his own way and is using religious teachings to help him achieve his goals. The way he combined Buddhism with makeup art and LGBTQ activism in order to help others be who they want to be was really inspiring to me and I hope to you too. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Work in Progress Japan. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this episode, hit that like button. And if you want to see more episodes like this, click subscribe. You can also check out all of our other content in the links down below. See you next time.